What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to take an idea in your head for an application on web into a Figma file into HTML within literally a few minutes. And we're going to be using Google Stitch, which is a brand new tool um, that does HTML and Figma files, uh, fully dynamic, uh, fully layered in seconds. And we're also going to be using ChatGPT to write a product requirement document in order to give Stitch a great starting place. So if you're not technical, don't worry. This tutorial is beginner friendly, AI made simple. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna wanna do is head over to Stitch with google.com. Uh, you're gonna wanna make an account. And as you can see here, you can go for web or mobile. I'm gonna stick with web. We could describe an app ourselves right here in the terminal using plain English and generate some all right designs. but if we want to really push the envelope, we would want to give it something kind of like a product requirements document. So if you're working in the tech world, you'll know what that is. If you don't, it's simply a it's very specific document that outlines all the features, the uh, UI, the UX, the feel, the look, the colors, the functions of the app that you're trying to build. So let's say we're trying to build, for an example, a dream logging app. Okay, so let's try and do it really quickly. And the best way to do that would be to go over to ChatGPT itself and get your products requirement document there. So what I'm gonna do is select 03 here on the menu. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because as far as I can tell, that's the smartest model you can use with the most reliability. So what we're gonna do is describe what our aim is, what the format we'd like, and then obviously fill in all the details we can. It's just a brain dump. You can use dictation if you wanna skip the carpal tunnel syndrome. So yeah, why don't we do that? So what we're looking for is a web application product requirements document that outlines the uh, UI, UX, and functionality for um, a dream logging app that As you can see, I'm just talking about all the things in my imagination that I could possibly come up with for an app. If I, in my mind, I were to think of, oh, what would I want in an app if I was to, if, if I was able to imagine it, then I just speak it out loud with dictation for the sake of my carpal tunnel. Uh, shit in, shit out. So if you get a really great prompt refined before we stick that into Stitch, you're gonna get a much more powerful result. We're gonna hit enter and see what that comes up with. If you've never used O3 or any of the O series models from ChatGPT made by OpenAI, they're reasoning models, which means they think they prompt to themselves. They talk to themselves, which you can see in real time here as it happens. And, and it's a bunch of pre-processing before it delivers a response and on average, you're gonna get a better result. So we have a product requirement document. Let's grab that copy. We're gonna go back over to Stitch and we're gonna drop that in. We're gonna click Generate Designs and watch the magic unfold. As you can see, there is no magic unfolding because we have to answer some clarifying question, which of course I knew. To be fair, this looks like exactly what we asked onboarding splash screen, the first screen you see when you log in, onboarding flow, that just means a survey that your user will go through before they start the app. You get a bit more information out of them and it's very useful. It's also helping to build a little bit of commitment on the user's front to actually give your app a fair try. This is just a proof of concept that yes, you can technically make functional, I'll show you in a second, but the main thing is you get all the screens and you can copy and paste those into Figma and know they're not just screenshots or images, they're actual assets and I'll show you that in just one second. So we'll say yes, go for it. And this time you'll see the magic happen as the screens come up one by one. Um, it is pretty incredible how far this has come. Okay, so we got some screens. As you can see, not all of them are perfect, but that's okay, I'll show you how to fix them. Uh, we have a, I think that's a splash? I'm not sure what that is. Here's the home screen. You can see it made what we asked it to. A couple of sliders and a couple of tags as well as a text entry field. We just spoke that into existence. You get the history tab here. It has 
you know, this design could be improved upon, but for a, for a first shot, one shot, all at the same time, it's not so bad. So we, each of these icons potentially represents a different dream from your logs and then some filters at the top and a search bar. Um, I don't see the analysis button that we asked for. Analyze, perhaps they put it as a separate tab. Okay, I just did a little back and forth to polish it up a bit because it didn't quite do exactly what we wanted, but all it took was two minutes of back and forth. I explained that we were missing the onboarding flow. That is just the screens with the questions and the surveys. And we were also missing a consistent header. So it's actually really good. If you have something that you want changed, you just ask that in plain English in the bottom corner and it will do that. Now, for the reason that you came, what can you actually do with this? So of course you could just take screenshots, you could download the image, whatever. But the better thing to do would be to open an untitled Figma you can title it, that's fine. Here's how we do that. You just click the Figma button and it's copied that whole screen. And no, it's not just the image, you get each layer. And I'll show you, you press Command V or you click with two fingers, you click paste here and you get the screen and you get the elements within the screen. So if I click on here and I click this little down arrow, you'll see that, and I click it just a couple times, you'll see I open up the different layers. So that's the header. You can hide it and bring it back in. This is the rest of the screen. Hide it, bring it back in. Let's open up the rest of the screen. And as you can see, we've got this title. How often do you remember your dreams? Open it, close it. You can see the text element is in there. We have full control over making this, you know, a little bigger. Anyways, let's get the rest of the screens in here. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so we got all the screens in there. As you can see, that's a full MVP application flow. Every single element in here is editable. So this is all well and good, but let's say we want to take it one step further and make this functional in something called Cursor. If you've not heard of Cursor, it's like imagine VS Code, but you stick an AI in the corner and you let it kind of do all of the work. This is what we call vibe coding. And that's a term that's picking up recently. Okay, before I go off the rails, showing you how to take a Figma of all of this and turn it into code with an MCP server, I just wanted to show you the simpler version. It's literally clicking on one of these screens and then clicking on the code button. And then from here, you have the actual code that makes up that screen. And you can copy that code. You can go over to cursor you can say, I would like you to build me this app uh, functionally. I will give you the HTML and the product requirements document. And then we paste in each of the slides to three code, copy code over paste that in so if we cut back to our product requirement document copy that go over to cursor say here is the product requirement document put that in underneath it and if you're on cursor you might want to turn on max mode for extra context you're just gonna hit enter and essentially the entire app will be built in front of your eyes this is the simplest way to go from those screens and stitch to the code to a functioning app out of what you got from Stitch. So I'll just show you real quick. Um, if you click get started, uh, we have the onboarding here. It doesn't let you progress unless you've selected something. Let's say I remember my dreams most nights. Let's say I found out about Dream Logger. Why do I want to spend time learning about my dream? Uh, I'm going to say to learn about myself. And then we have this testimonial screen here with some automatic animations. I didn't even ask for that. It just came up with that. I guess if we asked for something roughly like that. We just said a testimonial screen and animations. We go to Let's Dream. Okay, I'm going to put this dream that I wrote for last time. I'd say it was, it was a little negative. The unicorn was trying to kill me. Uh, it's, it wasn't a nightmare, though. It was more like adventure because I got away. And uh, I'd say that's pretty symbolic. Uh, I can save that dream. Dream save successfully. Obviously that pop-up needs stylization, but if we go into history now, 
uh, we have the dreams here. So if I, if I jump into this dream, we've got a little panel that shows you the intensity, the tone, the description, the tags, and if I click on AI analysis, it's going to process here and produce um, an AI-powered analysis of the dream. The black unicorn represents a powerful mystical force in your subconscious, whatever, you get the point. And past analysis will be saved here into your dream analysis tab. In the settings, we have um, some settings. That's not a real email. And the dark mode actually works. The dark mode actually works. Um, and throughout the whole application. I hope you found this video useful. I'm gonna keep making tutorials on a weekly basis, uh, explaining AI as simply as possible for regular people. If you'd like to keep like learning, to keep learning, more, learning with more with me, uh, subscribe, uh, subscribe, 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 subscribe,